Everybody, what's going on? Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not going to be long at all. I wanted to come out and tell y'all something really, really, really important. Um, I was in prayer today, man. I think, I think, I think we hit, we hit a gold mine. All right. So, hey, hey, what's going on? I'll let you guys come through. Uh, I ain't the kind of person, I'm just going to wait a few people to come in, then I'm going to go live. Look, I'm already live. I ain't got a lot of time to waste. So I'm going to talk to you all straight up real quick. Hey, hey, what's going on, Spin Doctor? Use the left lane to Bless keep you, left man. to merge onto I-75 yes, South. Okay, yeah, the, the GPS is talking to me. So listen listen to this, y'all. So so in a nutshell, man, here, here's, here's what I want to talk about. I, I want to talk about something that everybody is trying to figure out, is trying to weigh... Is trying to make happen, um, and you just got to deal with this, man. I want to talk about something that we all need, something we all care about, something we're all trying to manage, and that is money. <laughs> all right, um, here, here's what we have to understand: there are principles in regards to money. Money cannot be prioritized. All right, hey, hey, what's up, Sharice? Money cannot be prioritized. It has to be managed. All right. The reason why I say that is because so many times we go to church or we go to conferences or we go to these uh, emotionally overemphasized arenas of life, man. And we walk away feeling like I need to go and get motivated. I need to go and get inspired. <laughs> if that's even a word, I need to go get informated. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we go to these different conferences, man, and we hoping to shake a hand and we're hoping to to learn something we've never seen before. Hey, Richard, you know, we want to get information from people who we feel like have made it. Um, and when you really think about it, man, you walk away going from conference to conference, from uh, from event to event. You know, people are making up prophecies and crazy stuff, man. People are coming up with declarations. Man, look, this is the bottom line. Money is a defense, the Bible says. It's a defense. It's not an offense. It's a defense. The Bible also says that it answers all things. So what does that mean? You can't prioritize money. You have to manage money. That's how you win. You want to make a lot of money? Stop telling everybody, everybody going to make millions of dollars. Some people are going to be thousandaires. Some people going to be hundredaires. Some people be millionaires. Some people be billionaires. That's fine. But the, the but what you have to understand about money, man, is it has to be managed. The first thing you do on you know, all of your increase, the Bible says, what's up, Sam? The Bible says, man, is you're supposed to give a tenth to God. Some people argue, is it Old Testament? Is it New Testament? I'll put it to you like this. Whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, the principle still lives. Okay? When you can carve a tenth of 100% and give that to God, man, don't be afraid of the other 90 that's left for you to operate. Because when you give that tenth, there's another 100% of something else coming in. Then there's another 100% of something else coming in. So to be honest with you, success is not equated to money. Success is equated to who's affected by what you have. It's not about what you have. It's about who's affected. Who are you really affecting every day? Who are you changing? Whose minds are you stimulating? Whose minds are you giving information to? If you solve problems, you'll become wealthy. It's just that simple. If you work, you'll become wealthy. It's just that simple. You don't have to stand in another line. You don't have to raise your hand and say, Lord, speak to me. Get your tail up and go to work, period. That's what you do. Submit to the, the process of, of work and faith together. And I promise you, you'll win. You don't have to call a 1-800 number and ask for no food stamps. You don't have to stand in a line. You don't have to ask the government for any help. All you got to do is be faithful over a few things. The Bible says that God will bless you to become ruler over much. Faithfulness is parallel to rulership, people. It's just that simple. So I'm not ranting. I'm not raving. 
But what God was showing me this morning, man, is a lot of people are praying, Lord, give me millions, 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 give me millions. I need to make it. I need to make it. I need to survive. I need to help. I need to hurt. You know, it's, we, we, we come into God so wrong <laughs> when all we have to do is first give thanks for what you've got already. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This might hurt, but some of y'all need to stop asking God to make you a millionaire and ask God to help you and to show you to simply manage what you got already. Because if you can't manage, if you broke <laughs> and you can't manage being broke, how are you going to manage millions of dollars? Don't tell me when I get it, I'm going to help my mom. I'm going to help my daddy. Help yourself first. Right. You manage what God gives you. You tithe on what God gives you. And then you expect more as you continue to work. Faith and works. They work together and works and faith. They work together, right? If faith is faith alone, the Bible says that ain't good. If works is work alone, then what do you believe in? So faith without works is dead. But I believe that works without faith is even worse because what are you working for? So some of us. We're asking God, oh, I want to be millionaire. I want to be rich and I'm going to be powerful. I'm going to touch the world. Do, do, do it. <laughs> Just do it. But be mindful that everybody ain't going to be walking around with a million dollars. Some of us don't have the Bible and the word of God even really kind of tells us and it shows us some people don't have the capacity for millions. Shoot, you can't even handle a hundred dollars a week spending wise, right? So if you don't have the capacity, what you need to now is ask God now for <laughs> is to compartmentalize what it is you are doing. So if you don't have the capacity, man, then what you need to do is sit down and like the Bible says, is count up the cost. That's all. I'm done. I, I just wanted to get on here and talk about money. People, you know, they... And the other side of that is, is we don't have to over spiritualize money. The Bible talks about money a lot. And we, I think we we need to talk about it more. Um, but money is a defense. It also answers all things. But the root of evil. Is the love of it. When you put money before your family, when you put money before ministry, when you put money before your uh the things you love then it becomes dangerous all right with that being said y'all uh chime in comments are fine comments are fine sharing it is fine being mad about it is fine i'm just trying to tell y'all what the word of god says so we, we can prepare our hearts for the truth and i think we lie to each other i think we lie about what it's all about it's all in the word of God. Don't give that responsibility to a pastor. Don't give that responsibility to a bishop. Don't give that responsibility to your creditors. What you do is you sit down, you count up your cost, you manage what God has given you, and then watch God grow it. But you first got to tithe. The reason why I think it's important. What up, Steve? My dude, Steve Mixon, amazing drummer. A lot of people, man, I am ashy. Goodness gracious. I've been working. <laughs> So I can eat. Yeah. I'm not hungry. Because <laughs> I'm working. Okay. But uh, at the end of the day, man, money, that's that's what it's all about. People always, they overemphasize money. And all they have to do is sit down and just look at, it's in the word of God. We're talking about money, y'all. If you want to if you wanna be rich, you want to be wealthy, then you got to sow into wealthy ground. Period. You got to work with wealthy people. You got to talk to wealthy people. That's that's what it's all about. You doing it on your own, Chickamo and Shonda, and he's coming on the Honda, and, and you standing in the line and you doing five thousand praise breaks is not gonna make you millions of dollars. You got to get your tail up and you got to go work. You are your only guarantee. And I love how somebody told me they said, "Listen, you might get fired from a job, but you'll never get fired from work. It's too much work to be out here to do. The harvest is plenty." It's just the laborers a few. Folk don't want to work. You want millions of dollars? Then you got to, all those million dollar inventions and those ideas that you've created. Stop depending on other people. Stop saying they didn't give me a chance. 
They didn't give me an opportunity. God spoke to me back in February. I was in Houston, Texas, and I'm done. And God spoke to me, said, Ryan, stop looking for opportunities and start taking chances. Right. Start taking chances. That was right before the pandemic. And many of you are that are watching this video, your mind, God is already speaking to you. He's dealing with you about things you want to see different. You want to be the one to break the generational curse in your family. You want to be wealthy and you see God doing things in your life. Hold on, be strong and do not get tired. Do not quit. If you got to stay up extra hours and you got to pray and figure things out, do it. If you got to cry, if you got to, if you got to talk to a financial advisor, whatever you got to do, just do it. Just do it. Hey, this is good, Mindy. That's good. You'll never get fired from your purpose, gifts, and talents. I agree. Hey, Danielle, what's up? Steve Mixon, my brother. Daniela, uh, Lance Everson, Sam, Richard Gallant, all you guys. Uh, Sharisi, thank you. Spin Dr. Otis, my dude. Man, thank you guys for watching. Just share the video, man. I really want to see a lot of people wealthy. But here's the thing. Because you claim it, that don't, that is not enough. Naming it and claiming it, you got to have the capacity for wealth. You got to start thinking wealthy. You got to start acting wealthy. You have to put things in place to make it look like it's wealthy. If you're if you doing stuff and standing with a sign, ain't nobody going to give you nothing. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing. Nobody owes you nothing. But if you go out and you work for yourself and you do it as unto the Lord, God will bless you. You don't have to sell your body for it. Let me tell you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to play the lottery. You don't have to play craps. You ain't got to go gamble your money at the casinos. You ain't got to do all that crazy stuff, man. What you do is you sit down, you draw up a plan, and you say, I'm going to stick to this plan. I don't care what happens. I'm going to give God his 10% and the other 90, I'm going to learn how to live on the 90. And then what happens is that 90 grows. So then God will give you another 10% of another 90 to see if you can manage that. Then he'll give you another 10% or another, excuse me, 100% for you to tithe on that. And it continues to grow. But the way money works, money is not a place. It's a cycle. My pastor, Dr. James Mormon, always says you get to give, to get again, to give more. And it's more of a blessing to give than it is to receive. Why? I used to always think, oh, people that, 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 that get it, Oh, they blessed. God and stinginess never works together well. I don't care. You can be a millionaire today and stingy about it. You'll be broke tomorrow. Trust me. I've seen it. So the reason why it's more of a blessing to give than it is to receive because you have it to give. <laughs> right? So if you give it and you sow it in good ground, guess what happens when you sow apple seeds? You get apple trees. Hey, Dave Whitley. Hey, Darian. This is good. So if you're wealthy, that's good. Prophecies are good. But the Bible says more than a prophecy, love people. Just love people. Get in the cycle and then you'll grow. <laughs> that's right, Mindy. It's a cycle. So I want to encourage everybody who don't have a church home. You haven't tithed in years. And you're talking about you're going to be a millionaire. That word ain't for you. That word ain't for you. Clean your life up. Get outside of yourself. Deny yourself and say, man, I got to find a place to, to sow into. I need to put some seeds down, man, so it can grow back. Read Matthew 20, 25. It's all in there. Verse 13 through 31. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It talks about the five talents, the two talent, 